Okay, hi. <laughs> Look at us. We've got some new technology coming at you. Yep, coming at you. We're doing what we can to bring the people the real estate news they need. <laughs> <laughs> well, officially, welcome to Friday with Friday Friends. With friends. <laughs> Even worse here. Even worse I, here. I, I think it looks good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Friday with Friends is our opportunity to talk about what's going on in the market, to answer any questions you yeah. might have so that if you have any real estate needs, we would love the opportunity to be your realtor of choice, to help you with big challenges, to help you with even small challenges. Just answer some simple questions. We love to help and we love to do what we do every single day. So um, that's why we're here today. We are talking about five steps to buying a home in a virtual market. And yep. the last Fridays with Friends, our episode was selling a home in a virtual market. So if you are a seller, I want to direct you to that too. There's some great information in there about what you need to know as a seller in this virtual market. Exactly, exactly. And there's just like we kind of started with last week's, there's a lot of people that said, okay, I got through the winter. I'm ready to go out and buy a house. And now this pandemic hits. <laughs> and is that something that I can still do? And there's a ton of potentially mixed information out there in regards to what can you do? What can't you do? Um, and the rules are constantly changing, but just know that it is possible. It is yes. possible to buy in this virtual market today. And I think we're going to see this virtual world stay with us longer than when we open up, whenever that might be, whatever that might look like, we're still going to see video tours and things like that happening. So whether it's now or in the next few weeks, the next few months, this is relevant for you. I love it. And I think that's, that is like the key point is we don't know what's going to look like, what, what next month is going to look like. We barely know what next week's going to look like. Right. So when we're speaking today, we are going to speak in general, what we've seen in just this last 30 plus days of how the virtual market has shown up. Some of the challenges we've faced, some of the challenges we've overcome and how we are educating our clients so that they are most informed and feeling confident going into a virtual market because Everything can change. So what we're going to talk about today is not what, you know, today, May 8th, this is what's happening mm -hmm. at noon. We're going to say, talk to your realtor and ask these questions. Ask, am yeah. I allowed to do this? Am I not allowed to do this? Where can you, you know, how can you still see a house right now? Is it even possible? Ask the questions. We're not going to say this is right. This is wrong. This is legal. This is not legal because whenever this continues to be viewed, things might be different. So we're just going to say, these are the questions. Yep. These are the questions and conversations you need to have, need to be thinking about so that you can succeed buying in a virtual market. Perfect. I love that. Okay. Sounds good. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> let's get into it. All right. So um, take us off with number one. What is the first thing number to do one. when you are thinking of buying in a virtual market? Like today. Perfect. So like right now. Um, so we have five steps here. And like we typically, when we do our countdowns, when we do our steps, number one is always typically some type of reflection, <laughs> some type of, okay, let's sit down, ask ourselves these questions um, to see what we feel comfortable with. And um, as a buyer, there's a lot of things that are in the seller's court if you would agree when it comes to this virtual world, because it's their home at this point. So point. what do they feel comfortable with? But as a buyer, sit down and say, do I feel number one, do I feel comfortable buying a house without potentially ever seeing it until the final walkthrough? Do I feel comfortable buying a house and seeing it maybe after an offer is accepted with rules and things like that in place? What do you feel comfortable doing health wise and also you know financially am i ready to buy a house with these limitations in place that's a great point point. And, and here's the reality in this virtual market even in crazy time there have been buyers who have been getting into properties like there have been like I, as a as a, an agent i cannot stop lucy's buyer from connecting Lucy. on facebook with larry seller yep. lucy and larry like we can't we can't stop that and if lucy and larry are comfortable with it we just we as the realtors we can't be involved yeah like, legally we can't so i'm not saying yep. press the press like press it but i'm also saying like if it is important to you and you need to buy a house, talk to your agent, talk and see what's an option. Now, 
maybe next week, maybe the yep. week after that, who knows with all these phases, what's going to happen. But if you are saying, I only want to buy a house, if I, if I see it prior to writing an offer, you can look out there and there may be sellers that are comfortable with that. Now there yep. may be a whole heck of a lot of sellers that aren't, and that's fine, but at least you know to ask the question. So that's this number one step is what are you comfortable with? Yes, exactly. And that's so important because it's gonna be different for every single person. And if you say, yes, I'm comfortable with, um, let's say another question is, do you feel comfortable not going to an inspection? Um, we're going to get into this more, but their inspections are deemed essential. But the current rules as they are is it can just be the inspector. No one else can be there. Um, some sellers out there are saying, listen, you can look at my house virtually. You can write an offer, but you cannot step into my house until these New York State bans are lifted. So there's so many different ways that buyers are feeling comfortable, but also sellers are feeling comfortable. And it's our job to match that up. Um, so we can still get the job done for our buyers and for our sellers and make sure everyone feels comfortable yes. at the same time. Exactly. And so that that's this first step is we're saying here are all the things that we face. Here are the questions that we want you to ask yep. yourself so that when we're going into it, you're not emotional like, okay, well, I guess I'm okay, but I don't know if I'm really okay with that. Right. And then next thing you know, you're in total panic mode because you are in an emotional state making a decision. When we, The reason why our team, yeah. we are so passionate about asking questions first is because we don't want to wait until, we don't want to wait for another 20, you know, 20 days till you're in an emotional place where you can't totally see it. Exactly. You feel like you have to, you're pressured to make that decision in a split second. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why really sit down with you and any other decision makers that are going to be there to say, what do we feel comfortable with? And just know that each seller for each house, it might be different and we might yes. have to roll and be flexible with that, but at least have an understanding of what you feel comfortable with. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> Flexibility is key. Every, yes. every day, every situation is unique. So you have to go in knowing that's there too. All right. Sure. Number two, number two. Okay. So in number two, it's, we say it's connect with your realtor, but the reality is you're probably connecting with us already. And we're the ones that are asking you those questions. But before you even connect with a realtor, these are questions that you can do before you even talk to us. We always like to give you some steps that you can do, but the first thing that we want to be doing is making sure as always that you are pre-approved. If your yes. finances changed, if there's different credit scores, there's different interest rates, the financial world has switched up and changed up a little bit. We don't know where it's going, but making sure that you have an updated pre-approval. And yes. this isn't something you have to go anywhere to. Pre-approvals forever ago had been um, completely virtual. You can apply all yep. online, you can do a Zoom call or a phone conversation with loan officers, um, but really making sure that you're comfortable with the financial piece and that you have mm -hmm. an, a recent pre-approval showing your, your current status of employment and all of that. Yes, definitely. And, um, you know, sitting down and maybe you were pre-approved, but you were pre-approved through a different type of loan. And those rules and regulations, credit scores, things like that have changed recently because of the new world that we're in. So making sure that, okay, six months ago, you were pre-approved pre FHA with this credit score, things might have changed personally or with the bank's restrictions. So taking a look at that too and making sure that it's up to date is huge. I love it. I love it. And so once we're pre-approved and we really make sure that we're solid there, that's when we're coming in to be able to do our, our Zoom call. We can do a phone yeah. call. When we are ready, you, we still may be able to meet with buyers one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we think that as these are moving forward, depending where you're at in a virtual market, who knows yeah. if we can, but ask your agent what the current regs are, what the current rules are, and making sure that we're abiding by those within our team is, is a huge priority. But we're answering, we're talking about those questions. We're talking about price points that you're looking in. There's specific mm -hmm. price points, specific neighborhoods. Maybe that people are a little bit more comfortable. Um, maybe if it's a first time home buyer, they might not feel as comfortable buying a house sight unseen. But a second one, your second yes. home, people are like, 
I've already bought a house. I know exactly what I want. Um, and you just don't know. So having the conversation about what you're comfortable with and what you can expect there is, um, is a big conversation we're having. And of course, in the consult for us, we're educating you on the process. We're talking about your numbers. We're reviewing your criteria. We're doing mm -hmm. all the things that we've always done to set up, to have you set up on that MLS search so that you're seeing the properties that are listed. As we stand here today, we have about 40% of listing inventory on the market compared to last, last year at this time. Now, was last year at this yeah. time crazy hot? Yes. So those, we probably even have a little bit more for based on like a normal market, um, but there's not as much inventory out there. So you have to move quickly. And that's why that MLS search is so important. Yeah. And that's, it's also super important to discuss what your criteria is because of that limited inventory. If you are looking for a super unique property, maybe it comes to location. I just want to be in this specific neighborhood. Maybe it comes to, I without a doubt need a pool. I mean, I'd take a pool during yes. quarantine. Um, or maybe it's, I need 50 acres in a barn. Whatever that looks like for you, if your criteria is specific, it probably isn't a bad idea to get started right now because even if you were thinking of buying in the summer or the fall, because the limited inventory of houses, there's just nothing on the market. So if you're looking for something specific, we always say get the ball rolling on the finances and the MLS search and all of those things now. So when that right house does pop up, you can move on it since one might pop up every few months if it's really a specific criteria. Yeah. And the way that we're seeing it is so there's a lot of communication within our local real estate community. And there's a lot of yeah. sellers where, you know, there's there's a there's an illegal way to do it. But there's a legal way where people are like, listen, mm -hmm. I've got five sellers that want to go on the market. We are as as our team, we are hounding like, hey, we've got a buyer for a four bedroom, two and a half bath. They need an in-ground pool. They need yeah. a master suite. You know, like we are looking for those so that we're touching base with agents to learn. Is there anything that's going to be hitting the market in the next week, in the next month? So starting those conversations early and connecting with a the realtor, there's, there's no such thing as too early. As too early. Yep. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. So um, after we are connecting with our realtor, again, we're making sure that we get pre-approved. Um, we're answering all of the questions to make sure that you feel comfortable talking about timeline, goals, things like that. So um, that's step two. Step three is the fun part. Um, most of the time it's potentially looking at houses in person, but now we're going to that virtual um, route, which again, it, the ball is really in the seller's court. So this looks different with every listing. Um, you could look at 123 Main Street and they have a video tour and they have all of these photos. Um, or you could look at four, five, five, five six, six seven, <laughs> five, six, seven Main Street. And they don't have that much information. And you're doing it on an individual Zoom call with the seller. There's so many different options. So really it's seeing what the, um, what the seller feels comfortable with. Yes. And, and really it's, there, there's a variety of different ways that you can see the property. You can see the property from a pre-recorded tour. So yep. whether this be professionally or unprofessionally, you can have someone who's walked through the property as if you were walking through the property and then you view that link. You can mm -hmm. have it where there is a Zoom call or a FaceTime call where the seller who is at the property is touring you, the buyer and your agent through the property. There's really interesting technology called, you know, it's Matterport. There's a bunch of different ways to do it where yeah. you can click through and actually see and, and take your own walk through the property. So mm -hmm. what's different though, is we used to do all these videos for like marketing, like, Oh, did you see this open concept? And now these videos yeah. are like, we want to see the basement. We want to see the furnace. We want pictures of the electric yep. box. And within, you know, I know how our team runs it is we have the specific things that the buyers now want to see in order so that they feel informed enough yes. to make a decision to put an offer in, even though it's virtual, but they have that information. So when it's you're so looking important. at houses virtually, like Abby said, you never know what the seller or that agent truthfully is going to provide to you to be able to see it. But know that like these are things that you can request as a buyer and ask for if you are comfortable not seeing it. Yep, exactly. And that's what, you know, with all of our listings, we are putting our professional photos 
and a walkthrough video tour with attics, basements, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we did have one buyer who was looking at one of our uh, properties and they said, I'm really particular about the cabinets. Can you give us maybe a little bit more detail about that? Of course, the seller takes another video for us and we send that along. So just know as a buyer that there's never, you can always ask, <laughs> you can always say, hey, um, you know, we're really particular about A, B, and C. Can you give us just a little bit more details about that? An extra video, some photos, something along those lines to make you feel comfortable. Because that's the goal is to have the seller provide as much information as possible. So the buyer feels comfortable moving forward in that virtual manner. And, if, and, and the message that we are giving to all of our sellers, and we imagine most other realtors are giving to their sellers is, we're doing this in a challenging time. You too have to be flexible. You too have yeah. to help and support this. And what we have found is, I mean, our clients are amazing. Like they're always amazing. Of course, yes. Our sellers and most sellers are happy, are happy to do that, are happy yeah. to give you as much information, happy to, you know, open the cabinets and close the cabinets. But the key is, is that you have an agent that is on your side that is telling you, you can ask that. And again, we determine this by our consult to know what is important to you. Why is that important exactly. so we can do that? And one thing I would say too, is there's a lot you can see virtually with your eyes, right? You can see the video, you can see the photos, you can ask for specific videos, but you can't hear or smell anything. And smell, I know, is really important to you, Mandy. It's very important. It's, <laughs> it's very, very important. important. I think it was more so, important when I was pregnant and I would smell everything. I'm like, man, yeah. someone should really pay me for this. You would. You did. I know. Didn't You did a video on like, I'll come over and smell your house. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but not now because we can't go to houses. But yeah, the point now. is, <laughs> the point is, is. If you ask those questions, have your realtor ask those questions questions to the agent, um, and or even do a drive by, um, go by the house and maybe see. Okay, how close is it to this highway? What does you know? What are the streets like? Would I feel comfortable with my kids riding their bikes? Whatever that might be, but ask those questions. You know, do pets live in the house? Anything that it might be to just make you feel comfortable. Do not be afraid to ask those questions. I love it. I love it. So that's what showing a home or viewing a home in yeah. the virtual market looks like. And remember, when you are talking with your agent, the agent can learn from what the situation is the seller to say, listen, if I if it's really important to me, how can I get in to see the house? And we will tell you this is what legally you can do. And this is what legally I can't prevent you from doing. And mm -hmm. that's I mean, it's it's we understand the danger. We do not want to put, we are not liable for that. And we want you to know the reality of it. And we want you to know how for us, we are not, we are, we are abiding by everything. We want to be safe. We want to allow people to yes. feel safe in this process too. And that's so, so important to us. But if it is a key, you can say, I want to see it within 24 hours of acceptance. You could, you know, try to, you know, work it with the seller beforehand. And again, all this can change. This is May 8th. Who knows? All of this can change. And it's important that um, you are just yeah. talking with your agent and having a real conversation. I love that. All right. Okay, awesome. Number four. Number four, the fun part. So we see a house, we love it. We are able to write offers virtually. Yes. So this is something that we've been doing for years um, is electronic signing because there's a lot of signing that happens in the real estate world. Yeah. And we used to always joke, again, not now, but that if you want to write an offer at you know 9 p.m., I can send it to you from my couch, not drive to Tim Hortons or whatever that might be to um, to sign the offer. So it is possible. Um, what the really the first step is is to discuss the offer with your agent again virtually to see what um, you know. Of course, pricing and reviewing those comps is really important as well to see what you feel comfortable based on a ton of different factors, price wise, but then also the contingencies. As you were saying, is there a contingency of an inspection, potentially viewing the house if the appropriate rules apply, things like that. But all of that is having a virtual conversation with your agent to put that offer together. Yes. And not much has changed in this. However, there is yep. some timing. There are some timing pieces that are unique to a virtual offer. That is, I mean, there's nothing that you need to worry about, but the key is, is that this can all be done virtually. You do not have to worry about something dramatic that you now have to show up in person to submit an offer, to review comparables, yep. or to build in contingencies that will allow you to feel protected. 
Yes, and the electronic signing, um, a lot of you might have used similar systems. We use AuthentiSign, which is really neat. So you get an email, you click, you um, obviously have reviewed it with your agent to make sure you feel comfortable with it. And then you literally click your different signatures and it's super easy, um, which is great. And also just a key with the offers, um, we've seen how many offers in our days, Mandy? Probably lots. Thousands, hundreds. Thousands. <laughs> Thousands. Thousands. So we've seen a lot of offers, but at the end of the day, we're not real estate attorneys. So what we do is we put these offers together based off of our conversations. And then once the offer is accepted, there is that attorney approval period to make sure that you feel comfortable with everything and your attorney attorney does as well. Um, so if you had questions about the virtual signing, how does that work? Things like that. You do have that attorney having a second set of eyes on it as well. Yeah. And, and everyone loves the authentic sign because I mean, we've had people who submitted offers while they were like in labor, like they, you, it's, it's <laughs> click, click, click. It's nice. Was it, and easy and <laughs> was it me? It like something you would do. <laughs> it sounds like something I would do, but it, it's easy. And, and that is what is, um, is great about systems that we already have that can support this virtual market. For so sure. number it. five, this is where there's, oh, I mean, there's so many questions throughout this entire process that we're getting from our clients, but a lot of the questions we're getting is how do we get to the closing table? What does that look like? So mm -hmm. we have negotiations, right? So that once they're, once the property gets negotiated and agreed upon, then we have the attorney approval that is done virtually. Then we have inspectors and we, we discussed this earlier on. What are you comfortable with? how our inspectors are doing it. And they're just amazing. Yep. I mean, when I say everyone's being creative, everyone's being creative. The inspector will walk around and then at the end, if you want, or you can do it throughout the entire time, they will FaceTime you. And they will say, here's a concern I have about the foundation. Or you can ask them questions. How does this property yep. smell? I haven't gotten to smell it. Little things yes. that we're finding that our buyers want to know about that your inspector is someone that you pay and they can go in on your behalf. So that's how the inspectors work. When it comes to banks and appraisals, an appraiser can come in, can go into that house legally. However, if the seller doesn't want them to, the banks can still get creative. They do drive-by appraisals. The banks For the are first time ever. <laughs> Yes. So there's a lot of questions around how's the bank going to be doing it and they are making it work too. When it comes to the closing table, so guys, I'm just working my way down, getting to closing. When it mm -hmm. comes to the closing table, we have our attorneys that have that are doing everything completely virtual if you want. And when we have the conversation up front, we know who we can direct you to if you would like our referral on that. There's also people who are working in their office and then the um, you're, you pull up to their office and they come out and they hand you a piece of paper and you sign the piece of yep. paper and they run it back up and then they check it, make sure it looks good. They're being creative. You can do everything virtually if you choose. And if you do want to have more in-person or do see, speak to someone, there's those options as well. So everyone's getting pretty creative yeah. to bring this together and bring it to the closing table. Yes, and for the first time, New York State has never had this virtual closing until this happened. So again, as we talked about with the selling side and with the buying side, this isn't just a, okay, this is going to be the next few weeks and then everything's going to go back to normal. We're really seeing that there's is probably going to affect us in a positive way coming out of this, um, you know, when we are unpaused or whatever that might look like in the future, because now we have all of these virtual options that maybe some, you know, our team has been doing virtual signings and, you know, things like that for a long time now. But now there's all of these other avenues that I think are really going to enhance the real estate um, experience for everybody. Exactly. And, and the thing that we, the biggest message we want to come from this is to understand the importance of what we are doing in a buyer's consult. So when we're having a buyer's consult, we're handling all of this for you. When you yes. answer those questions at the top in the buyer's consult, the, the questions that we had at the top of this episode, like that is what is going to help us guide you through this process and succeed in the virtual market in a way that you feel educated, you feel safe, you feel comfortable, you feel informed so that you can make the best decisions possible. And right. yes, does it look a little different, but everyone is on board with us that we have been able to help over 20 buyers and sellers since this pandemic happened, bringing them together to be able to, um, and, and like I said, 
they're feeling educated, they're feeling safe, they're feeling informed, and um, that's the best part about it. So I would encourage you, if you are thinking of buying in this virtual market, reach out, let's start having that conversation, and we'll yeah. see how we can best support you. Yes, I love that. That's perfect. And it's all a conversation, and then we we really handhold the rest of the way, um, no matter how you feel one way comfortable, not comfortable, whatever that might be, there's ways to work around it. Um, and we can get creative to get the job done for you while making you feel comfortable and safe as well. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Well, that's what we got. We hope you feel like ultra educated <laughs> on the virtual market yes. now. And and I, I know I said it a million times, disclaimer, <laughs> talk to your agent. Talk to your agent about what the governor mandate looks like now and how we can best support you because whenever you are watching this, heck, even while we're recording this, something could have changed. Like, exactly. just don't take what we are saying to say, this is what Mandy and Abby said. It is, this is where we're at now. And here are the important questions and conversations to be asking to see if there are these small little pieces that we can incorporate into your, into your home buying process that allows you Perfect. to come out of this um, into into buying a virtual market and to not have to wait until next year if it's really important for you to move now to. Exactly. I love it. That's perfect. Well, thanks for tuning in. Too. <laughs> Friday, Friday with friends. friends. So bad. We got to get I back can't. together and do this in person soon. I can't wait. I can't wait when we have two allowed to have two people together. Friday yes. with Friends is our opportunity to talk about what's going on in the market, to answer any questions you might have so that if you have any real estate questions, if you have any real estate needs, you know that you can reach out to us. We would love to help friendonyourside.com, the friend team real estate on Facebook and all social platforms. We are very easy to reach out to and we look forward to helping however we can. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>